All right, so let's add a physics body to our tile map, and uh, we're gonna go with the same uh, rock tile uh, setup I was using in the last video. So if you haven't uh, already figured out how to set up a tile map, I'll backtrack a little bit, because uh, now we're just gonna be looking at the code to make a nice little pretty physics body for this. And take a look, you can actually uh, go ahead and uh, put in a, uh, set the alpha data of your of your tile maps, and that'll be part of the physics definition. So you're, what you're seeing right now, is just the uh, the physics bodies uh, turned on. You can always go over here to uh, uh, your game view controller. Put in here view dot shows physics. Set that to be true. Of course, you don't want, you wouldn't ever want to publish your game like that. Comment it out. But uh, if you do that, uh, yep, you get to see all the physics definitions. So let's uh, figure out how that's going to be done. Uh, just real quick, uh, we do have a uh, a name for this uh, tile map that we have out here, rock tiles, and you're going to see that right now there it is rock tiles so the first thing we do uh in our didn't move the view statement is uh just go through every node in the scene and uh, we're just looking for our rock tiles so once we hit on that you can see that we just break out but uh, uh before that what we're going to do is make sure that uh some tile map node or basically we're going to make a sk tile map node out of this node so if, uh, do that in the form of a question we say some tile map uh, if, uh, if that equals node as, there's our question mark, as SK tile map node, that means that that uh, succeeded in becoming an SK tile map node. And then we're going to pass that into our give tile map physics body function, which is all down here. And, uh, and then afterwards, we're actually going to remove the entire um, tile map node. So I hope you didn't get too attached to it or... Um, put some sort of animation in the uh, scene editor. If you did something like that, that's really not gonna work for this particular setup. But uh, what happens here is our uh, function is just gonna go through every single uh, tile and uh, make a new SK sprite node out of it. And that's what you're seeing right down here. Uh, and then put it right back in that exact position that it was at. And that's where you start putting in your physics body. So let's um, let's take a look at the code. Uh, I, I know a lot of the, uh, the last four lines of this are getting cut off here if you're just trying to view everything at once, but uh, just keep your eye on this. Okay, and then after all that, there's just four closing brackets. Okay, so, uh, all right, so here we go. We pass in the um, the map. Uh, I probably really, <laughs> I don't know. I, I should have called this tile map. That was a kind of mistake. I should have fixed this before I started recording too. It's it's not. It, it's just I, there's it's an unnecessary renaming right here. So it just says tile map is the map. Uh, all right. So our starting location, we're actually not going to end up using this until we down over here. But you do want to hold on to that, um, and that's the starting location of the of the entire tile map. And what this does is it, it basically just makes it so that uh, our, our tiles are exactly where they should be. Okay, <laughs> end statement there. Uh, and then uh, we're, we're getting our tile size. And this is the, um, if you look over here, it gives you a little hint, the size of each tile in points. So it's just going to be the, um, uh, uh, let's see, it should just show up over here if you click on it, your tile size. There it goes. So you're just getting that back out of it. Uh, and then... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna use this half width and half height uh, to uh, to basically position the x and y of each one of those tiles, uh, and you know you can sit here with a calculator if you want and kind of figure each one of these things out. But uh, just you know, trust me that that part works. And then and here's the main meat of it where we go through every single column and every single uh, row. So we start by looking at the columns. Um, so one column at a time, but then for each one of those, we're also going through each row at, you know, starting at zero, right? Uh, and then from each one of them, we're going to get the, um, the tile definition, okay? And uh, we use that uh, to get the textures out of the, um, the, the tile map that's in there. And uh, I, you know, I didn't actually know this until I was kind of like scrutinizing this code that... Um, that there is a tile array here of textures, okay, or, or basically we're creating a tile array of the texture definitions. I would have assumed that uh, there was just one texture on there. Uh, so anyway, um, if somehow you had more than one, um, I guess you might have to figure out what to do with that. But uh, but basically all we're doing here is we're using the, the, the first tile texture in that array uh, to, to set up the SK sprite node, okay. And then as I discussed earlier, so here's the X and the Y, uh, which uh, just end up getting used right over here. Again, pull out your calculator if you want to really scrutinize that. And then, um, so here's where we set up the, um, 
a, a new SK Sprite node. We end up adding it down here. Uh, to call it a tile node now is maybe a little misleading. This could just be called a Sprite, the Sprite, whatever, because that's what it is at this point. It's, it's no longer uh, any sort of tile map or anything like that. So SK Sprite node, and we're just initializing it with that tile texture. Uh, right here and this is also where you could go in here and put in a custom class of your own so for example if you would subclass sk sprite node you know um, you, know, you can put in here my subclass now right and then you can start filling in properties for everything else because that's essentially all that we're doing now at this point we're just setting the properties of the sk sprite node um, so here's our physics body we're just creating a new physics body with that uh, texture so there's the tile texture and then uh, with the size in there as well. And, uh, and that of course is what uh, gives us the alpha body or alpha channel for that, um, for the physics body. And, and you know, you could put in there uh, escape physics body with rectangle or circle, but you know, it doesn't seem to be really to the point, right? Uh, and then uh, linear dampening, Th these are, I'm just kind of showing you guys that these are some of the other properties that you can put in here. I rarely actually set linear dampening. This, I copied this from some other project I was working on. Um, in fact, it was the platform games kit. Uh, affected by gravity, that's gonna equal false, allows rotation false, is dynamic false. You know, if you had this set to be true, this set to be true, your tiles are just gonna fall down right away, which could look fun. Uh, and then <laughs> allows rotation. Probably you're not gonna ever wanna set any of these to true if you're doing a top-down world. Um, but then actually come to think of it, for a top-down world, you really don't want physics bodies anyway on here. This would be more like a Mario setup where Mario is gonna jump through here and kind of you know move his way up this way, right? So better for a side-scroller. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, friction, you know, uh, zero is like glass, one is like sandpaper. And uh, then we add our, our, our tile node in there. And uh, finally, we got to do a little bit of more uh, position tweaking on it. Okay. Uh, we kind of initially set it up over here, but now we're um, adding in that uh, starting location. And come to think of it, I guess we could have probably combined those two lines of code. Uh, but uh, that is it. Uh, and uh, don't forget to then, you know, at the end of this, remove out uh, your tile map. And of course, uh, you guys can, uh, you know, just copy out this whole nice little convenient function uh, from the source projects. And if you've made it this far in the video, by the way, if you are not uh, watching me right now through the, uh, the Apple TV, we do have a new uh, Cartoon Smart TV app and uh, really kind of, I think, makes it a lot easier to find the videos that you're looking for and uh, see what's new and, and stuff like that and just kind of casually learn a little something from the couch, right? Okay, that is going to be it for today.